Welcome to today's video where we are still here in Nagoya with Dostin at Garage Defend. Where are you, mate? Up the back there. Sup? And uh, if you guys, I don't know, I don't know if I filmed it or not, but Dostin actually, you picked me up in this yellow ultra rare because this is a Bathurst R FD RX7. These things are worth a lot of money. And uh, at first, like he messaged me before, like yesterday when I was saying, we were talking about me coming and stuff. He was going to pick me up in this super rare Nismo 34 GTR. So when he rocked up in this, I was kind of like, that's not a GTR. But then he told me something. What, tell them what you told me. So I knew that Sam would probably be wearing his favorite shoes. And that's yellow. Nice shoes. And I thought, hey man, you probably have to match him up. You know what I mean? I have to admit, like the moment he told me that, I was like, yeah, okay, that's pretty cool. I appreciate the thought. That was definitely sick. So, true story, I've never driven an RX-7 FD. I would love to own one in the future at some point, except I do want to do pop-up deletes because I really like the ones with the lights like built in. But anyways, that aside, whoo. Here we go. A lot of people think that the Spirit Type R, the, the Spirit R's or whatever, Spirit R's and Type A is the best uh, or the most limited edition RX7, but the Bathurst. It, it's not. It's the Bathurst R. And also, what's the color code? The CY um, for the yellow. What's the name for it? Official name. We will see it later on in a moment. So. Oh, we're gonna actually look at the plate. <laughs> oh, pop up. All right, they yeah. still work. Look at that. Uh, I hate doing this, finding, you know, where is it on this one? Oh, it's right there. Yay, yay! Dude, this is clean! This is clean, you gotta clean it up a little further, but you know. Oh, that's fine. Dude, it's in good condition. How many cases is this done? 27,000 kilometers. Only 27,000? 27. Uh, Alright, let's look at that paint code. Where is it? Uh, I don't think the paint code's there. Maybe in the door. It's the HZ. It's the paint code, I guess. Is it? HC paint? HZ? Oh. That aside, we're going to take this thing for a little drive now. I'm excited. Once again, never driven an FD before. I'm nervous because this is prob either going to make it or break my dream of owning one because I don't know if I'm going to fit in this. I'm kind of a big guy. Like, I I'm lanky and long and uh, we don't have... I don't have the best track record of fitting in small Japanese cars. So, uh, let's give this a shot. <laughs> Carbon fiber trim is nice. Okay, yeah, this is this is a problem. <laughs> okay, Let me I'll pass the camera to Dustin. All right, yeah, Sam. Let me close the door first. Oh. You sure you can do this? I'm, I'm, I, I hope so, dude. Otherwise, we got a pro. That's as far back as it goes. Yes, sir. <laughs> you may have a problem. All right, does this wheel adjust though? That's that's the most important thing. Does this not go up? Does this go up? Is there an adjuster for it? All right, let me see. One second. This is small. I think it won't. No, it doesn't. I'm sorry. Are you serious? I don't think it does. Master. Okay. There's no adjuster for this wheel. What was Mazda thinking? Today's video is sponsored by Dapsky. And if you don't know who or what Dapsky is, they are an online store that sells air fresheners for your car. They have the best quality and price starting at $2.99. So, let's take a look at some of their products. Here are some of the air fresheners that Dapsky sent out to me. And as you can see, they have a massive range. And this is only just a little amount of what they have available. Um, I love that they have a huge variety. And not only do they cater towards the JDM space of, every, of, of the car scene, but... They also cater to other things like the UDSM space. So guys, head to dasky.com and grab yourself some air fresheners for your ride. Trust me, they smell great, they last long, and once again, best quality at their cheapest price of $2.99. So what are you waiting for? Once again, head to dapsky.com, grab yourself some air fresheners, support the companies that support me. I would not be able to be doing the things that I'm doing with the shop that I have now if it wasn't for companies like Dapsky. So thank you, Dapsky, and let's get on with the video. <laughs> Does this seat adjust and go down at all? Oh my gosh. Why so, would, this is like the second car that Mazda has made that I've gotten in and there's the wheel doesn't go up and down like adjust at all like the the NA Miata so, I had so, so your dream dream is dying in front of your eyes huh? no, 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 not yet. no, you yeah. won't we fit can, <laughs> We can do a custom seat mod. I think we can make it work <laughs> all right, It's okay, baby 
you gotta put your clutch in for this one. That's weird. Most Japanese cars don't have that. <sighs> All right, well, we're gonna well, try and drive. The best, the best driving I can do with the, the wheel practically in my lap here. Um, nice little naughty factory uh, wheel, I guess. You see, the Buzz R Type R came with all the interior, uh, the carbon fiber interior, as you guys can see that here, and it was special for this model RX7. Mm, it's and, very nice. Yeah, I love it. So quiet. So quiet. Right, let's go for a little drive. Left, right. Where do you think I should go? Either way, you decide. Just trying to find out the clutch biting point. All right, cool. We'll go left. Hey, wait. I'm in. An, I, I'm in Japan in an RX7 FD. <laughs> go get my money. <laughs> go get my money. <laughs> no, <I'm sorry. laughs> we can rev this thing to 9k, right? <laughs> it's a Bathurst edition, man. Now let's go, Sam. Okay. so smooth. Rotaries blow me away. Every time I drive a rotary, it's like just this super linear curve. I really enjoy it. Just keep going straight. Keep going straight. Wow. It's kind of responsive down low. Not bad. Yeah. This, this, this is definitely a problem. <laughs> I'm literally, my knee is pushed up against the e-brake when my foot's <laughs> up. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Can the camera see this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, FDs were not made for tall, lanky Australian guys. How does Adam fit in this so well? Oh, he's got bucket seats in his, that's why. I think he's a lot smaller than you. Uh, we're about the same height side by side. Maybe I'm like a tiny bit taller, but yeah. Fair we're pretty, enough. pretty even. Damn. Well, uh, yeah. I still think we can get one of these. I'm just gonna have to do some lanky tall guy mods, like what you do in an NA Miata. Yeah. Road stuff. Oh. Oh. Okay. A little bit of wheel spin. Okay. That's funny. I didn't even feel like this thing had power for that though. Yeah, Dustin's exactly. sitting there, and I'm just like thrashing a, a potential big money car. You know. It's okay. It's okay. He said it's okay, guys. No, Let's go. no, 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 no. <laughs> no. So if this gets a speeding ticket, like it'll go to your shot, you right? Exactly, exactly. All right, let's go. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'll be, I'll be telling the police. The driver was this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Me no speak no Japanese. <laughs> oh man. But all jokes aside, this is a really nice car to drive. It's smooth. Definitely. I'm surprised by that wheel spin before. I was not expecting that. This thing really is nice. So we have just arrived at uh, one of Garage Defense secret storage facilities. Woo! Wait, hang on. Is that a Supra? Hell yeah. <laughs> 22,000 K, what? Welcome. Ooh, the Evo 4 is so nice. Did you just say all mine? All of these are mine? Just for today. Just, uh, <sighs> yeah, this is so good. It is, right? Hmm. These Integras are kind of nice. Type R's? Type R's. So nice. Beautiful. Interior on this 34. Nice. Damn. It's Evo 4. V Spec 2 white. 34 GTR. See, if I couldn't get a midnight purple, I'd go for the white. White is goals for me, too. Oh, it's locked. Bummer. You got the keys? All right. Nice dark blue 33. Red 33 GTR. Ooh, ooh, another white one. Ah, uh, yeah, white GTRs look so good. I'm frothing at the mouth. And you got this pearl white one. The pearl white, like they look so different. Look at these two like kind of flat white, gloss white ones compared to the pearl white. 
entirely different color. Damn, this thing looks nice. It's like a gunmetal gray with full Z-tune, hood, fenders. Beautiful. Ooh, nice white 33 GTR. Some old LMGT two wheels. I think those are twos. Another Millennium Jade one. Okay, that's cool. So if you're about to change the headlights, so you can see that. So yeah. You know, it is what it is. It is what it is. It's a, it's a, everyone who know who has a Skyline knows. <laughs> it's a Skyline issue. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, here we go. I like those wheels, right? Yeah, I love the GT, the LMGT2 wheels. This is a special edition from the factory, gold color patch. Yeah. You could actually make a request, but hey, that's the car. Uh, it's supposed to pick you up today. Oh, you're going to pick me up in this? This is yours? Yes, sir. This is personal. Yeah, so this is um, uh, Dustin, Dustin's personal 34 GTR. Tell us about it. What, what, what's special about it? Okay. I like to say it's Clubman spec, but it's not. So this car has been rebuilt by a legendary morning factory, Mismo. And it's got the, just if you hold on for a moment, I'll pop up a hood and, and uh, you will uh, actually start the engine. It's got the S2 engine. Oh. Repainted uh, yep. at the Nismo. And it's also, Nismo repainted this. Exactly. Damn, that's not a cheap it's cheap paint rebuilt. job. It's been rebuilt. And I, you know, it's you beautiful. Saw, you saw how much was repainted. Right? Yeah, yeah. I know how much Nismo charges to repaint a car. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, you got good tires on there too. The Advan, uh, exactly. the 8052s. GTR 35 rotors and brakes and everything else. Well, why'd you get rid of those? A little bit downgrading. Sometimes you gotta do. <laughs> you want that authenticity, right? Yeah. Put the... It's got the pretty much. Yeah. It's really nice, dude. The carbon fiber lip is beautiful too. Yeah, needs more offers. And you got brid uh, seats in there as well. You see, a lot of people think that I should end up placing the stock um, seats in there. Seats in there, you know. The, the yeah, the I don't know, man. I really like the the, the fixed backs. You gotta sit on this thing. Yeah. I mean, look, you're a big guy, so you might yeah. fit. But the guy like me, if you sit in it, you know how like yeah. how comfortable it is. I love my Zeta 4s, like, like, yeah. It's like so that. good, right? This is good. Like, I don't mind the fixed back seats for long drives, actually, because like, especially like my Zeta 3L or my Zeta 4Ls, yeah. they just hug you and like, they're so comfortable. They're so comfortable, see? Yeah, man. This is a nice, nice, nice 34. I'm jealous. Very jealous. But the problem with that is that you see, I got my phone, right? Mm. Um, and every time, whenever I'm bringing a car here and around, what I like to do is this. You see? Oh, so okay. If this thing fits... I need to teach you about Ebisu spec. Yeah, what about that? It just means you got to jack your car up because if you drive anywhere at Ebisu, like to drive around the track, yeah. if you're not at least like 15 centimeters yeah. off the ground, you hit everything. Yeah. yeah. So you got to do the same thing. You got to raise the front of your car a little bit. I should, you know. If you drove this in Tokyo, you'd be screwed. Yeah, probably. Like Tokyo streets and roads, like, yeah. Like, that's not even that low, honestly. It's not honestly. even that low, really, yeah. but it's, again, it's, when you're, when you're yeah. bringing a car here, yeah. it's kind of a little bit uphill, so yep. you want to make sure that you're not going to, you know, crack this thing because it's expensive. Cost Carbon right? fiber, yeah. yeah. Pricey we're stuff. One, so, you know. Oh, that's a legit Nismo one? Of course. Yikes. All right. Okay. I, I didn't see this thing. This is um, this is actually I haven't I haven't really spoke. Okay, I haven't been completely honest with you guys today. I'm actually here because Admiral Thomas of JDM Space has asked me to come check out his new rocket ship, um, and this is it. Midnight Purple 33 GTR. Tell me tell me some specs on this. Tell me some info. Right, so this one is UAE 5 Series 1 mole V spec edition and it's one of the cleanest GTR 33s right now. You could have purchased for sale but already been bought by Tommy. So how many Ks have we got? This car has got about, I mean to be exact, uh, yeah, I don't want to be wrong, but about 60 something I think. Okay, we'll so really low kilometers. Yeah, we don't have the keys yet. We're waiting for them to arrive. But Dude, even like the front lip, it's practically brand new. Hey, Tommy, I touched your car before you did. Mm. You see? You see? Yeah. Oh yeah, look at that clearance. You can actually. <laughs> <laughs> Although I'm sure Tommy's gonna do some uh, some modest mods to this. 
I don't know, like he's a real purist, so um, I don't know what he's going to do with it. I assume he'll put some kind of LMGT wheels on there, like something period correct, like the LMGT twos or something. He is going to tear apart this car, you know. You reckon? Yeah, full restoration. Oh, dude, I used to have one of these mufflers. I had, I actually uh, put one of these on my 34. Yeah, old logo Nismo um, muffler. I put one on my 34 and then I cut it off after I put a titanium exhaust on it. But yeah, so it came off a 33 and I modified it to weld it on my old 34 GTT in Australia. Still very, very cool car. But you see, Sam, finding this clean GTR 33s right now is quite a bit challenge. It is know? definitely a challenge. And so that, that's why I'm not surprised Tommy snatched this up the moment he found out about it. But yeah, interior looks to be immaculate. We'll probably get to take this thing for a little bit of a drive in a little bit. Yeah. But uh, I think let's leave it at that. I'm pretty hyped. That's a very nice car. I'm sure Tommy's going to love this thing too, that's for sure. Very nice. The OEM wheels look really good. Very much stuck. Yeah. Yeah. From what I can see so far, like it's in really immaculate condition. Oh, the old Nismo logo, Tommy's gonna love that. He's probably gonna like clear coat over that because it looks so cool. I don't know. Anyways, that's cool. We'll get the keys and we'll pop the hood and get inside and have a better look, but definitely a really nice car he's got himself here so he wants to show me something about this yeah i mean you're preparing it up for sale early in v-spec black car you've been getting five and five yeah like all of these specs here yeah okay let's take a look at this one nice uh carbon fiber cooling course, panel this is a garage defend garage defend makes carbon sense yeah cooling panel exactly and nice Again. It's got a Nismo Sports air filter! Oh yeah! <laughs> special. So what's so special about this one? Well, rust free. <laughs> rust free. <laughs> rust free, clean, accident free and cheap. How many k's is this thing done? 151. Oh nice, what's cheap though? Roughly. Somewhere around $100,000. Around $100,000, that's cheap now. For GTR 34 my friend. The <laughs> spec batch. Again, let me stress that. Accident free, rust free. You know. I, I want to cry because you call that cheap. Yeah, <laughs> Welcome to the GTR world. Oh man, tell me Anything about it. Anything that comes with this badge. Especially the gold one, yeah. Especially the gold one? Yeah. Costs money. Big yeah. money, yeah. Let's take a look at a couple of other here, cars here. Okay, sure. What do we got? We got a Bayside Blue gold badge on this one as well. We spec very clean inside out. Rust free, accident free, and it's the car that we focus most of the time. Yeah. Both of them just been sold. Purchased, immediately sold out. Wow. Both sold out. I actually have three people want to purchase this one right now. Wow. Two people, I mean, even really, really wanting it. This is sold, super yeah. clean. It's even got like. A very clean. Very, very clean. clean. The timing belt, water pump, and everything else has been changed. These were timing belts we used, I think. In, 2020 July. So wow. Four months ago, timing belt has been strut tails. Place. You know, I don't think I've ever seen strut tails this beautiful. Very clean GTR 34 V spec. Mm -hmm. This car belongs to my good friend Usman. Usman mm. is from Australia. Oh really? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. He's a Whereabouts in Australia though? Hmm? Whereabouts in Australia? Melbourne, Australia. Melbourne? Yeah. Oh okay. Yeah. Queenslanders don't get along with Melbourneers. Really? Yeah, from people from Victoria. Yeah. You're from Australia. Too. They they play fake fake football over there. Come on. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I promise, guys. I promise you. AFL is a real sport. Okay. As much as Queenslanders deny it, well, some Queenslanders. All right. But I promise you, it's a real sport. Please don't hate me in the comment section. I'm just I'm just having fun. I'm just stirring the pot. This one is also, I think this is year 2000, mm -hmm. and it's been sold going to Australia. Australia as well. And you see, Sam, what a big difference. With cooling panel. Yeah, dude. Yeah. And have not made. Yeah, it. that's what I was saying before. Like I think in yesterday's video, uh, when we filmed it, like a cooling panel just makes such a huge difference. Look at that ugly like pit there. And look at this one. Yeah, it looks so much nicer. 
even if you put an alloy one there, something to just cover and hide all this. Also, it does have a very good purpose because it's helping direct more airflow into the radiator as well. So it's also very beneficial. But like seeing stuff like this is really good. And like see how nice the zinc coating still is on the fuel rail here. Really, really good signs on a on a, a Nissan car like a GTR and stuff like that. You want to look for that fresh looking zinc because that's a good sign as to the condition of the car and how well it was kept, whether exactly. it oxidized and exactly. stuff like now, that. Let me do some advertisement because we gotta, you know, sell this. Okay, sure. <laughs> so again, when you purchase a $100,000 car, yeah. my friend, you wanna put one of them. Yeah. It costs less than 400 bucks. Less than 400 bucks? bucks? Yeah, that's exactly. This is probably the best cooling panel you can find in the world. And this is developed by us, and we manufacture that at our shop, and we supply the most of the resellers. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff, right? Yeah. And, like, that's the thing. Like, I mean, if you're spending over $100,000 on a car, that's nothing to you. It's a piece of cake, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's chump change. Like, I just, yeah, here you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So we got a couple Supras here, the arch nemesis of the GTR, but we can see that there's obviously more GTRs than them. So they're the ones that are fearing for their lives because Godzilla is about to swallow them whole. But uh, what have we got here? I uh, don't see intercoolers. So non turbos? Yeah, they are actually, one of them is SZ model and the other one is SZR model. SZ, are, SZ models come in automatic and five speed manual transmission and this is a Five-speed okay. non-turbo. This one is the R edition, and is the R edition is just like our Zemo will come with a six-speed different transmission. So this one comes with that six-speed different transmission, and if you want to make this one our Zemo pretty much, swap the engine. Okay, so this has got an NA engine with the get track transmission. Exactly. That's weird, I didn't know they did that. Yeah, they did that. Huh. Is everything the same about the car except the engine with the RZ? Very much. Uh, interesting. So this would be a cheap, RZ for someone, like if they had the know-how to swap it. Well, compared to what an RZ is, this would be a cheaper solution if they've got the know-how to switch out the engine. Exactly, that's the exact, yeah. right to the point. This one is 52,000 uh, or 53,000 kilometer only genuine mileage, which translates to about less than 30,000 miles. Yeah. Uh, beautiful condition inside that. I'll pop up the actually third engine. Oh yeah, we'll take a look at it in a bit. And you're asking for about $39,000, which is not a bad price if you think That's about it. It's not that bad considering to what I've seen other cars sell for. If it was this price like a year or two ago, people would be like, oh, it's expensive. Yeah, but now you people are expecting it. You can't find cars like that. So yeah. It's, pretty much worth it. it's crazy because when I left Australia five years ago, automatic Supras, so like the, these ones, were selling for three grand. And then manual na supras were selling for five to six grand it's ridiculous don't you think it's crazy and like how much would this non-turbo five-speed sell for right now you see sam oh here you go oh the guy just arrived with the keys yeah. so you see a lot of people think that you're jacking up the price no it's supply and demand exactly so we have to buy this from somewhere well. exactly it's not like you bought it for really cheap and just jacking up the price so even if you look at the auctions auctions are a great place to actually Take a look at the reference. Yeah. Automatic, non-turbo Supras, clean ones, are going at least $30,000 right now. $30,000 so for an automatic, that's that's 100%. Yeah. Like on top of what they were selling for in Australia when I left five years ago. I mean, I remember the days and I supplied a lot of number of importers in the USA. I was shipping out about six, $7,000 Supras. It was a very long time ago. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah. And it's crazy to think about too because even like the states had Supras, like they were a, a factory, like people were buying them from the factory over there. Exactly. So it's crazy to think that even these have skyrocketed so much in price. You see, that what happened with the US side of the Supras is that they were limited in their numbers. Uh, There's so much more people out there wanting those cars, but such a limited numbers of them mm -hmm. manufacturing in the US. I think what really did it was, uh, what really drove up the price was that, is that a Supra meme? You know, like that meme, like everyone all of a sudden now is just thinking, I want a Supra. Okay, that was cringe and terrible, but. <laughs> we got the keys. Let's open her up. Whew. Damn, it's nice in here. All right, let's pop the hood. First thing I want to look at is the engine bay and the strut towers. It's like the first thing. Oh, this is clean. This is such a good example. It's a very nice 33 GTR. Thank you. Please. Yeah, this is beautiful. Can they start up? 
Yeah, I think we should. Let me uh This is a Tommy spec one, yeah. A Tommy spec one. All right. Start her up, boy. Oh, you got to connect the battery first. Oh, yep. Yeah, we're going to take this thing yeah. for a drive. We're getting those temp plates put on. Another place on 33s you really need to look in for are like in the grooves here for rust. And this is clean too. Really nice car. Yeah, Tommy's done a really good job with this. He's going to be very happy. All right, let's start her up. We neutral. Hey, uh, Tommy, you want me to do a Camry start on this, right? <laughs> Very nice. Uh, I don't think there's much more to say. We're going to take this thing for a drive and just drive it around. But he's definitely done really well. So we're just out taking Tommy's car for a little bit of a drive. It's really nice. Um, you may think that this is weird to say, but it's not really anything special because like it's a stock GTR and by no means are they like super fast or anything like that. Um, it's actually kind of depressing. Like where Nissan like released these from the factory is nothing like what their potential is with all the bolt-ons that they have in the stock form. Um, but still nonetheless, it drives nice, pretty smooth. Pretty much everything I expect a uh, 33 GTR to drive like. Gauges seem like they all work, which is nice. Left side. Pretty good. So overall, Tommy's definitely gotten himself a really clean, nice condition 33 GTR. And uh, to say I'm jealous would be an understatement. Turn right, <laughs> then turn right. It's also a really big privilege to be able to drive this and check it out for him too. So thank you so much, Tommy. And uh, I think now is probably a good time to mention as well, if you want to see what happens to this car when it gets stateside and he starts modifying it, then uh, definitely go check out Tommy's channel. We'll put his link down in the description. Um, and give him some love. Let him know I sent you. And yeah, this thing's going to be... I, I get the feeling Tommy's not going to... Uh, not going to keep this stock for too long. But little second gear. Keep right at the fork. <laughs> I wonder what that squeaking noise is. Probably just like a, a vacuum line or something. I'm so envious of this thing. So much fun taking this thing for a bit of a drive. We gotta bounce now. I gotta get to the Shinkansen bullet train as soon as possible. I got a big dinner in Tokyo tonight. So, Dawson, I just wanna say a massive thank you to you, you my guy. We're gonna be in touch a lot more in the future. We'll be doing some more videos with him, checking out some more stuff. And uh, yeah, definitely a great time. And once again, guys, Garage Defend, if you need any crazy cool GTRs out of Japan, these are the guys you want to talk to. Any other cars as well, Thanks. definitely the go-to place. I got to get my stuff and then we're going to head to the station. Oh man, I was so stressed that we weren't going to make it in time, but we managed to get here. I am already going to be running late though for my next appointment, but uh, we'll be in Tokyo in pretty much an hour and a half. It's crazy how fast these are bullet trains. If I was to drive here, it it's a five hour single trip. To drive back, like I'd be doing 10 hours of driving if I drove out here. So it's so good to take the bullet train. And it works out to be probably a little bit cheaper. Like if you take into account gas and, and all that kind of stuff, it's about $100 each way. So for me to travel here today and back is about $200. It's not that bad. <laughs> so this is what we're having for dinner. We got May here. And Okachan was supposed to be here, but he started feeling unwell. So uh, the rest of the team are here and we're all enjoying some amazing sushi. This looks incredible and it's like a course meal. So they're going to bring out a bunch of different things. And we're starting off with, do you remember what this was called? No. You don't remember? No. Okay. But it's, it's sashimi. It's raw fish. I'm going to eat it. It's going to be great. But I wanted to show you guys just how good this food is. It is prepared fresh right in front of us. The guy literally cuts it up. I'll film the next lot that he makes uh, as he keeps making it and bringing it out. So I'm really excited. This, that looks really good. I can't wait to eat that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So this next thing is kind of like a, it's like a pudding, but it's a savory pudding. And it has fish semen in it. <laughs> I love the fish. <laughs> It's a JDM thing. So. It's a JDM space thing? Yeah. So. Okay, JDM space girls like, um, <laughs> well, boys.
for the team. This is this is this is what you have to do to be really a part of GM space. <laughs> It's not that bad. I'm just trying to mind over matter right now, trying to not think about what's inside. So this is the next thing on the list, which is like fermented fried fish. So I guess it's like marinated in some kind of sauce and then fried, but it tastes really sweet and good. So I highly recommend this as well. And then got some kind of like sliced daikon on the side too, which is nice. A little bit of pickle. Mm, very good. So the next thing on the list is tuna gills. Yes, my friend, fried tuna gills. This looks amazing. Actually looks really, really good. I'm gonna down this. It tastes like meat, like beef? Yeah. All right. Oishi. Oishi? Okay, well, let's dig in. So we're now on to, I guess like the sushi kind of part of tonight. This is sushi, right? Because it's got the little bit of rice under there. Real JDM sushi. Real JDM space sushi. You gotta, you gotta actually, you gotta eat this very quickly. Otherwise it takes off and goes into the Milky Way. <laughs> All right, the meme's getting a little out of hand. Wait till you see what I have planned for the meme though. It's gonna get even more out of hand on my channel. But, so as you can see, this has a bit of rice under here. And this is tuna, right? Nama tuna. So nama means raw. So uh, you can use nama for whenever you need to use the word okay. raw. Just eat. Mm. Wasabi gets me every time, man. Yeah. Such a different taste. It's like this radishy kind of spicy flavor. It's so weird. And it's real wasabi. Like, this is real wasabi here. It's like the actual, like, root. Most, um, most wasabi is, like, fake. That's real. One thing I just want to say as well, like, when people talk about eating raw fish, it's technically actually not raw because they cure it. You can't just like get a fish, catch it, cut it, and eat it. You have to cure it first. You have to make sure like all the bacteria and the dangerous things inside the meat are dead, and then you can eat it. It's kind of like when you pickle things, but obviously you're not actually pickling the fish. You just, it's called curing. It's a very important thing. And that's what's done to all sashimi, all raw like fish and seafood meat in Japan. So there's really no danger to it. Unless of course it's like sat in the sun or something and you pick it up off the street and eat it, then there's a problem. But like sashimi and raw fish in Japan is all cured, all the bacteria has been killed in it. So okay. it's actually like totally edible. Okay. Stop acting. So not JDM. Actual. Okay, fine. I'm sorry, I'm just in my JDM space and enjoying JDM space life. <laughs> Oh, By the way, I signed you up to the JDM Space Force, so I hope you don't mind. <laughs> okay, I'm happy. I want my shirt. Okay, sounds yeah. good. So right now he's preparing some sea urchin sushi. And look at this little like platter here, just full of sea urchin. <laughs> Crazy. So they grind the wasabi on stingray skin. That stingray skin nailed to that board. That's so cool. Oh yeah, they call it shark skin over here? Yeah, but actually, he went and looked and then... Oh, it's stingray like overseas in English, yeah. So interesting, look at the texture of the skin. Very cool. It makes sense though, because like I've, I've picked up and caught stingrays before. Their skin is very, very like, like it's like sandpaper. So it makes sense that that's what they'd use that for. Very cool. All right, dinner was amazing and we're walking to the train station and look at this, we're here at Nissan Crossing. It's your favorite fair lady. And it's also my favorite fair lady. Nice Datsun. Rally Monte Carlo. Very cool. I've seen this in the, um, the Heritage Museum. Very cool car. And then they've got a uh, 35 GTR in display, and the new Aria. It's pretty cool. This would have a lot of these kind of like display places here in Japan, it's really cool. But yeah, there you go. Didn't think I was gonna end this on more car content, but there you go, awesome. So time to wrap it up here. That's the end of my little Nagoya trip. Last uh, two videos, couple days for you guys, but it was all one day for me and a bunch of work, 
and I'm sure you also know I filmed another video for Tommy as well. So it was pretty hectic. I had a short amount of time to get everything done, but we managed to get it all done. So that was awesome. It fits you in frame better. And yeah, that about wraps it up. Hope you guys enjoyed. Smash that like button, write a comment, and subscribe. See you all in tomorrow's video. Floor gang. Oh, peace out, Jamata. <laughs>